one of the most recent improvements in the heavy transportation industry, is extended wheel end life and reduced maintenance products. Eaton Corporation's LMS hub, or low maintenance system hub for steer, drive, and trailer axles, combines the proven performance of the Eaton Outrunner wheel seal with precision manufactured components that work with today's standard axle spindle ends and fasteners. Simply put, the Eaton LMS hub virtually eliminates in-service bearing adjustment and removes installation variables that can cause troublesome wheel end play. Because the system is available for steer, drive, and trailer axles, the longer life benefits can be applied across a wide range of applications and ratings in a common and consistent manner. The new low maintenance system combines Outrunner brand seals with precision manufactured bearing spacers, special tolerance bearings and hubs to reduce premature seal and brake lining replacements by preventing the destructive lateral action caused by excessive wheel end play. While the heart of the LMS system is the Outrunner seal, the low maintenance hub also builds on other proven components like standard spindles and spindle nuts. Readily available components also means easier and less costly servicing. Now let's talk about servicing the Eaton LMS hub system. When new products are introduced, unfortunately the service technician is the last to find out. Technicians usually find out about the product when they first encounter them at the repair facility or during planned maintenance schedules. In order to service the product, you have to know the product. So to familiarize you with the LMS hub system, let's take a minute to go over the components. First, the LMS hub and cup assembly. The LMS hub and cup assembly are available in both aluminum and iron. These are the half-stand bearing cone assemblies. Both outer and inner assemblies are special tolerance bearings. This is the precision bearing spacer. This provides the required bearing spacing to eliminate excessive bearing preload or end play, resulting in proper wheel bearing adjustment. All spacers for each spindle type are the same part number and length. This is the Outrunner wheel seal. It's durable and built to last over 500,000 miles, practically eliminating premature seal failures. And finally, the LMS identification ring, installed on steer and drive axles. This helps you to uniquely identify the wheel end as an LMS hub assembly. Trailer axles will either have a special hub cap with LMS molded into the cap, or an LMS sticker. The steer axle may also have an LMS hub cap instead of the internal ID ring. The LMS hub uses the familiar standard spindle nuts and washers for all available spindle sizes. Now that we know more about the product, let's service the product. When replacement of an LMS hub assembly or any of its components is required, follow these service and assembly procedures carefully to obtain proper wheel bearing adjustment and to maximize service life. Warning. Never work under a vehicle supported by only a jack. Always support the vehicle with jack stands. Block the wheels and make sure the vehicle will not roll before releasing the brakes. First, we need to build up the LMS hub. Inspect and clean the hub cavity, spacer, bearings, and seal bore of any contaminants. Lightly lubricate the wheel seal and enter and outer bearing cones with the same lubricant used in the axle sump for drive axles or the lubricant used in the hub for steer and trailer axles. Caution, when using an oil bath system, do not pack the bearings with grease. Grease will prevent the proper circulation of axle lubricant and may cause wheel seal failure. Bearings should only be packed with grease when used with a grease system. With the hub or wheel end assembly placed in a flat position, lubricate the inner bearing and install into the inner bearing cup of the hub. It's important to note that for steer axle hubs, install the bearing spacer into the hub assembly with the large diameter end facing the inner bearing cup. This must be done before the bearing and seal are installed. Always take special care to avoid contaminating or damaging wheel end components. Place the outrunner seal on the proper installation tool with the words air side facing the adapter plate. 
lightly lubricate the seal OD with wheel and lubricant. Do not apply any bore sealant to the seal OD or ID. It is important to note that the use of improper seal installation tools can distort or damage the seal, causing premature seal failure and void the seal warranty. Position the seal in the hub bore. Tap the adapter plate around the outer edge to position the seal. Hit the tool handle carefully. Because of the rubber OD, the outrunner seal is designed to install much easier than metal OD type seals. Once the seal bottoms out in the hub, the seal is installed correctly. Check to be sure the seal is not cocked and that the unitized seal ID and inner bearing turn freely. Lubricate the ID of the seal with a light film of clean wheel end lubricant. For the drive axles, install the bearing spacer into the hub assembly with the large diameter end against the inner bearing cone. Lubricate the outer bearing cone and install into the outer cup of the hub assembly. Install the optional installation tool to the hub cap or axle shaft mounting surface of the hub assembly with the two existing nuts, studs, or bolts. Hand tighten until the installation tool presses against the outer bearing cone. The optional installation tool is recommended to keep the spacer and outer bearing cone in place for installation of the LMS hub assembly onto the axle spindle. Note, if an installation tool is not available, carefully hold the outer bearing cone in place with your hand while positioning the hub assembly onto the spindle. This will prevent cocking of the hub and seal, which can cause seal damage. Once the LMS hub has been built up, it is ready for installation onto the axle spindle. Note, failure to use all required LMS components will increase end play and reduce seal performance as well as void the warranty. Now let's install the LMS hub assembly onto the spindle. Inspect the spindle and threads for corrosion or contamination. Clean thoroughly as required. For the drive axle, a centering tool is suggested to ease installation of the hub assembly. Slide the centering tool onto the end of the axle spindle with the small cylindrical end first until the large diameter shoulder contacts the end of the axle spindle. Mount the hub assembly onto the axle spindle with a smooth, firm motion. Use care to maintain alignment between the bearing cones and the spindle to avoid seal damage. When installing the LMS hub onto the spindle, caution should be taken so that you never support the hub on the spindle with just the inner bearing and seal. This can damage the seal and cause premature failure. Remove the optional installation tool from the hub assembly. Install the inner spindle nut with the dowel pin outward and tighten. While rotating the wheel end, torque the inner nut to 300 plus or minus 50 foot-pounds. This applies to the steer, drive, and trailer axles. If the hub does not turn, improper or damaged components have been assembled. Disassemble and use proper replacement components. Install the dowel type lock washer onto the axle spindle, aligning the tab with the keyway. If the washer does not align with the dowel pin on the inner nut, remove the washer, turn it over, and reinstall. If after this the washer still doesn't align with the dowel pin, tighten the inner nut just enough for alignment. Never tighten the nut more than half the distance between the holes. You should never back off the spindle nut to align the dowel pin with the dowel washer. For drive and steer axles, install the identification ring onto the spindle over the outside diameter of the dowel type lock washer with the anti-rotation bosses inboard and over the flats of the inner spindle nut. The identification tag is retained between the tang type lock washer and the inner nut. Note, you would always want to install the identification tag or LMS hubcap on the steer and trailer axles. This will help other technicians to identify the wheel end as an LMS hub system in the future. Install the tang washer aligning the tab with the keyway. Install the outer nut on the spindle and tighten. Then torque the outer spindle nut to 300 plus or minus 50 foot-pounds. Secure the outer nut by bending two opposing tangs of the tang type lock washer over two flats of the outer nut on the drive axle. Bend the tang over on the steer axles. 
Attempts to measure wheel end play of the completed LMS hub system is not required at this time. Install the new gasket on the axle shaft or hub cap and install on the axle. Tighten the axle flange nuts or hub cap bolts to the specified torque. Fill and lubricate the axle and wheel ends with Eaton approved lube. To ensure proper lubrication of the LMS hub cavity, refer to TMC recommended practice RP631 for correct fill procedure. The LMS hub assembly provides a means to achieve proper and consistent wheel end play. By tightly controlling the tolerance of key system components, wheel end play of 0 0.0 to 5 thousandth of an inch is achieved. Since proper wheel bearing spacing is designed into the LMS hub, the wheel nuts simply need to be torqued to 300 foot pounds without backing off spindle nuts. I repeat, the spindle nuts should never be backed off. Now let's talk about servicing the LMS hub assembly. The LMS hub system is designed for extended service with limited maintenance. Since the LMS hub system uses standard spindle ends, the entire system is serviceable and rebuildable with industry available components should an emergency truck breakdown situation occur. However, to ensure optimum performance of the LMS hub system, Eden recommends that the hub be rebuilt or serviced with only genuine replacement components. Replace the wheel seal, hub cap or axle shaft gasket and lubricant any time the hub is removed for service or at 500,000 mile intervals. Clean and inspect the wheel bearing cones, cups, spacer and hub any time the hub is serviced or at 500,000 mile intervals and replace if damaged. In case of emergency field repair and LMS components are not available, the LMS hub assembly can easily be converted to a conventional wheel end assembly. This can be done by installing conventional or standard bearings and by removing the identification ring and bearing spacer. Be sure to keep the bearing spacer and identification ring with the vehicle and be sure to follow standard procedures for manually adjusting the bearings. The LMS identification on the hub cap for steer and trailer axles must be removed or replaced by a standard cap. When the vehicle can be rescheduled for service with genuine LMS hub replacement components, simply follow the LMS hub installation procedures. Warning. Do not attempt to build LMS hubs by using LMS bearings, spacers and seals in a standard hub. This may result in seal and or bearing failure which may result in the loss of wheel end and or loss of vehicle control. With the LMS hub system, periodic inspections of the LMS hub assembly is required. Leaking wheel seals are an operational concern of today's fleet maintenance personnel. Oil leaking wheel seals can lead to environmental damage, lubricant soaked brake blocks and shoes, and unscheduled downtime. To help maintain the integrity of the LMS hub assembly, Periodic inspections should be performed to check for leaks or any other signs of damage. Visual inspection of the LMS hub assemblies for any damage or leakage should be performed during pre-trip inspections. Inspect the hub cap bolts and gaskets for leakage on steer axle applications. For drive axles, inspect axle shaft studs and gaskets for leakage. Inspect the seal for leakage at the ID and spindle and the seal OD to the hub bore. If a gasket leak is noted, replace the gasket. If a seal leak is detected, remove and replace the wheel seal with a new outrunner wheel seal and rebuild with original LMS components. Important, when the wheel end is lubricated with a semi-fluid grease, the characteristics of the lubricant may make it harder to detect leaks. The semi-fluid grease does not always flow onto the brake shoes as oil does. However, if a bright red color is noted at areas in which leaks could occur, this is a sign that there is a leak. Also look for a change in color, as dark discoloration of the lubricant is normal with extended service. The LMS hub is built to last and will reduce the need for service and significantly extend wheel end life.